Aloha everybody and welcome back to part 4 of Mega Man 11. So, who's Fuse Man gonna take out? Probably Blast Man, right? Fuse and Blast? No, no, no. You gotta think like a Mega Man 1 player. And I actually got this right on my first playthrough. Elect Man takes out Ice Man, who takes out Fire Man. So Electricity should have to go after Tundra Man. And that's who we're taking on first. Aw, yeah. Though Tundra Man was designed for land development and exploration in polar climates, he found a new obsession the first time he saw a TV ice skating championship. Since then, he has spent long years perfecting incredible ice skating techniques out on the polar ice flats. But since his audience is generally huskies, polar bears, and seals, he doesn't get many reviews. Tundra Man had a tougher looking exterior when he was first sent to the North Pole, but he made some modifications to suit his graceful passion of ice skating. To him, the fact that his dazzling moves have been locked away at the North Pole and never witnessed is a crisis on the scale of global warming. That's actually what the bio says. <laughs> Tundra Man eagerly awaits the day where he can show the world his exquisite skills. Also, America, vote. But, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tundra Man stage. It has a wind-blowing gimmick, which has been kind of a theme with a lot of Mega Man games lately, with, like, Tornado Man had it, Commando Man had it in 10, and I really love the kind of platforming you do when the wind is actually blowing with you. Like, when it's blowing against you, it just makes things slower and more sluggish. But luckily with this level, every time you have some kind of platforming to do, it's always blowing with you instead of against you. And I love hopping between tiny platforms when you have a little bit of extra speed to it. I loved doing it in Tornado Man stage at the very end of that level. I loved doing it with the Sandstorm in Commando Man. And I love doing it here. I love that kind of platforming. It's so good. And, uh... Oh, I forgot! The, the most important thing about the bio with Tundra Man. Every single Robot Master has a manufacturer. And, uh... Well, actually, let's talk about the mini-boss first. So this is a Mastodon display. And we're not destroying the Mastodon, we're destroying the display. That's the actual enemy. It creates icicles that will rain down, and then it's going to try and blow you into the spiky ones, which will only damage you, they won't kill you. And then you gotta watch out, because when he charges, he'll charge right back. So you jump over, slide under, and when you have speed gear, just take advantage of it to destroy that stand, to destroy that display stand. It's very weak to scramble thunder, which is also the weakness of Tundra Man, but, uh, yeah. But the manufacturer of Tundra Man is listed as, get ready for this, Cossack Robot Laboratories. Which implies that Tundra Man may have been built by Dr. Cossack from Mega Man 4. Eh? Eh? How about that? For all we know, maybe Kalinka got into the robot design business. Maybe Kalinka made Tundra Man. It could have just been a rookie employee of Dr. Cossack's. We don't know, but we just know that he was manufactured at Dr. Cossack's laboratory, which is pretty fascinating, pretty interesting stuff. A lot of people theorize that Dr. Cossack was actually in the intro cutscene uh, when they're at the robot university and Dr. Light's shutting down his uh, Dr. Wily's double gear research. A lot of people think the blonde guy next to Wily is Cossack, but in all the promotional art and stuff, Dr. Cossack usually has brown hair, not blonde hair. Although his NES sprite kind of had blonde hair, so it's a little bit of a sticky wicket, I suppose. <laughs> yes, a sticky wicket, that's what I'm going to describe it as, but, uh... Anyway, sorry I'm not talking about Tundra Man's stage. <laughs> I'm just fascinated with the bios and whatnot. All of those spiky things can be destroyed by Impact Man's ability. He can actually destroy a lot of armored stuff. He can destroy Metools, no problem. He can destroy those shields that fly uh, back and forth in one direction. Impact Man is who you go to when you want to guarantee damage to something, because he always pierces right through armor, and that is so damn helpful. Trying to take my spotlight? I'm like a rose, frozen in ice! Dog. Tundra Man is a lot easier when you have speed gear, but uh, basically he skates around the rink here. He skates around going left and right. Sometimes he'll jump, sometimes he'll hop over and over and over again, just hopping the entire way across. And that's why it's important to have speed gear so you can actually react to this stuff fast enough, because he can go across the skate, uh, go across the ice really, really fast. 
And uh, I would recommend you could visit the shot beforehand in order to get the ice boots, the spike boots, that will actually increase your gripping on the ice so you're not always sliding around in the stage. Because you can get that part from the shop and it could make uh, going through this level a lot simpler and a lot easier. But when you have his weakness, Tundra Man's not that big of a deal. And when you have uh, speed gear, it's easy to charge shots and just lay into him. And he skates across the rink a lot slower when you have that on. So he's not that bad, if you ask me. By defeating Tundra Man, we get Tundra Storm, and this is one of my preferred favorite weapons in the game. By itself, it just shoots a big wave of ice energy above and below you, and somewhat around you. But, when you turn on power gear, it's a screen nuke. It destroys practically everything that's on screen, and believe me, I've tested this on armored enemies. It kills them in one hit, too. You only get like maybe four or five shots with it, but man is it useful to have. <laughs> So, I really love that. Oh, the speed gear booster! How this unlocks is you have to activate speed gear 80 times, and then Dr. Light will finally get the inspiration to create this in the shop. And speed gear booster makes it so that you'll run at normal speed in speed mode. So, like, the enemies will be slow, everything around in the environment will be slow, but Mega Man will not be. Including his gravity, he will still fall like he would if he wasn't in speed mode. So you're going to have to time your jumps really, really well. I also got the mystery chip, which means that I'm going to be getting a lot of bolts whenever I finish stages now. Uh, and I, I really wanted to get that earlier, but I had some really bad RNG. I just was not getting any bolts during any of my playthroughs. <laughs> so luckily, I can finally afford it now. I love the location of the stage. This is like a weird Metul camping ground, and there's lots of Mets in the background who are just like, they're just camping out under the stars, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> but uh, anywho, Torch Man was designed as a camping advisor, teaching people about campfire safety. In his spare time, he ventures out into the wild to work on his very own martial art, Torch Jutsu. He started Torch Jutsu in order to train himself to keep his flames under control since the slightest lapse in judgment can cause a dangerous flare-up. With his training incomplete, he still tends to flare up in moments of strong emotion. He gets particularly excited when it's time for the turkey roast, resulting in many a scorched bird. He once tried training by standing under a raging waterfall. The subsequent repairs took three months. <laughs> Don't stand under waterfalls, Robot Masters. Don't do it. Unless you're Splash Woman. Or Bubble Man or any kind of the aquatic variety. But anywho, guys, these game moves so fast. Uh, this level is by far uh, the one stage I've heard the most frustration with. Most people seem to hate the firewall segments. They don't like that. In some areas, if you shoot the lantern owls, it will actually go completely pitch black, and you can't really see anything other than what the light of your Mega Buster will shine on. Like, you'll shoot pellet shots, and that's the light you'll only be able to see. I love this background! This background is so good! <laughs> but, um, the one instance people really hate about this level is the firewall. Because every now and then, three times in this stage, you'll be chased by a firewall that is absolutely one-hit kill, and you have to navigate past a whole bunch of enemies, you have to jump over certain obstacles, you have to make sure that every single platforming bit counts, because if it catches up with you, it just touches you once, and then you die, and uh, that's no good. But uh, I would recommend, for sure, if this is your first time playing this game, remember you have speed gear. Remember how much easier it makes the platforming when you could just focus on jumping and stuff at a very slow pace, so you know when to jump and when not to. Uh, the other thing is, if you have Tundra Man's ability, Tundra Storm, you can actually freeze the firewall. Yeah, see? Just like that. It will only be frozen momentarily. It will eventually get unthawed and it will actually, uh, or sorry, thawed, and it will actually, like, come at you again. But, it still really, really helps. And I know some of you will be like, well, then I won't have weapon energy for the Robot Master. Well, you could pick up a weapon tank in the shop. <laughs> The weapon tanks exist, you can find one in a stage, I found one in Tundra Man stage, and that can refill all of your weapon energy. Not just one, but all. 
Uh, weapon tanks have gone back to the way they were in Mega Man 7 instead of the way they were in Mega Man 10. So if you use a weapon tank, refills every single weapon that you've used. And since you can carry nine of those things, uh, it can make the Dr. Wily castle pretty trivial when you don't have to worry about weapon energy, you know. Speed Gear Master I get for killing a whole bunch of enemies while with one charge shot in speed mode, and it's pretty easy to do when you have those tiny little spiders, but, uh, and again, the upgrade I just got in the shop, the advanced speed gear thing that makes you run at normal speed, that's so easy to get because all you really have to do is activate speed gear 80 times in one stage, your first stage if you really want, just turn it on and off, on and off, on and off, then when you come to the shop and buy it, it's so easy to outrun the firewall when I'm moving at the speed I'm moving at now, only everything else is slower. The firewall is slower. The enemies are slower. It's tough, yes. Mega Man games always are, but I don't think it's that bad. Let the combat commence! Fall to the fist of flame! Hey, it's the epic voice guy. <laughs> so this is Torchman, and Torchman is very similar to Flame Dragoon from Mega Man X4 in that he's always doing a whole bunch of karate moves. And, uh, I would say he's actually the toughest robot master in the game to take on with just your Mega Buster. I would not recommend him as your first robot master at all. I think he's really tough, but... Because, like, your Mega Buster shots don't go through his fireballs. If he shoots a fireball and you have a charge shot, your charge shot will be blocked out by his fireball, making it a little bit hard to actually hit your target. And so, even when you're in Tundra mode... You want to use Power Gear and do the screen nuke because it makes it that much easier to get close to where Torchman is. You don't have to, like, go up to him. You can just hit him with a big screen nuke. Uh, he does dive kicks that I still have trouble dodging. It seems to go for where you are, but it can actually, like, go way higher than I expect. And, uh, eventually he'll do Power Gear where he just shoots this very slow fireball that you'll need to jump over. And then he'll try and land exactly where you are and create his own fire wave that you'll need to dodge. But anywho, this is Blazing Torch, ladies and gentlemen. Blazing Torch is an angled fireball shot. It goes up and then it goes down. And when you activate Power Gear, it shoots three fireballs instead of one. And uh, it's useful for getting rid of some obstacles in the last remaining Robot Master stage. And since we've only been playing this game for 12 minutes today, let's finish this. Blast Man is a pyrotechnician, or in his words, an explosion artist, who designs the explosive effects for movies and theme parks. He can provide any explosion the client needs, from cataclysmic blasts to shy little bangs. At the time of the Wily incident, he was working on a new explosion-themed attraction for the theme park Flowerland. In his spare time, he writes a column for his favorite magazine, Boom Monthly. There's not a month goes by that his explosive opinions don't blow the pages to bits. <laughs> so yeah, we're in a theme park. I love the little mini skeleton guys because if you read their bios in the gallery, apparently they're like uh, villain mascots for a children's TV show. And that kind of reminds me of like Beautiful Joe or something. <laughs> um, there's Immortan Joe or whatever the heck his name is. Whenever Immortan Joe is in one of these walkers, if you actually shoot at his body and not the legs of the machine, you can actually kill him and the machine in one fell swoop. If you only shoot the legs of the walker, then the machine will be destroyed, but Joe's gonna come out and he's gonna try shooting at you with his shield and stuff. So, uh, it's always a good idea when you see those walkers, either use Tundra Storm, because that really wrecks him, or shoot Joe in the face, don't shoot the legs of the walker. That's my tip. This is not like Mega Man 2. There's a lot of different, you know, fun little tricks you can do in Mega Man 11. This does not operate under the same logic that a lot of Mega Man games do. W tank can refill all my weapons, oh yeah. This mini boss, probably my least favorite mini boss in the whole entire game just because the coaster he's in is armored, so you have to shoot them from the side when they're going up or down. Or I can just screen nuke them with Tundra Storm. <laughs> Whew, that was tricky. That was difficult. <laughs> I love Tundra Storm. It's one of the best weapons for being a screen nuke. Oh, it's so good. Anytime you see any of those red boxes, like the ones up there, uh, 
uh, Torchman's ability can actually destroy those bo those boxes. So you don't have to wait for other characters to blow them up. You can blow them up if you really want to. Assuming you have Torchman's ability anyway. And uh, again, going in weakness order lets you take advantage of the stage, not just the Robot Master themselves. Which is pretty good ace level design, if you ask me. Ugh! Should have timed that better. <laughs> Go, 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 go! This reminds me so much of Grenade Man stage from Mega Man 8. Ah! <laughs> oh, I just love the power wheel. I love being able to switch out with abilities on the fly and just immediately grab whatever I want to use instead of cycling through LNR, instead of pushing pause and going through the menu. Oh, the power wheel! I can't imagine a Mega Man game without it anymore. I just love the power wheel so much. <laughs> it's one of the best features in Mega Man. My god. But, uh, yeah. There's lots of parts you can get in Mega Man 11, but they all have very specific uh, unlock requirements. Spike protection exists in the game, but unfortunately you have to die to spikes a whole bunch of times before Dr. Light gets the idea to actually design it, which sucks. There's one upgrade that allows enemies to drop bolts more often. And it only unlocks if you play Mega Man 11 on a Saturday. For real, Dr. Light doesn't come up with it unless it's Saturday. Time to begin the countdown! What's wrong? Don't be a dud! Alright folks, so with the angled uh, shots that Torchman's ability does, I always just stick to the middle of a room in order to shoot them on Blast Man here. And he's another one of those robot masters I think is pretty tricky to take on first just because he sends so many bombs that even with speed gear you have to have the right placement to make sure you're outside of the blast radius of the grenades. Uh, you can't intercept them I believe, but uh, it's still very very tricky to fight this guy without powers or without an energy tank or something. So uh, he'll just rain them a whole bunch and you just gotta speed gear and pay attention to where they're falling and you'll dodge them. And uh, that's how you handled that. But anywho, folks, we beat Blast Man. That means we get the Chain Blast. By itself, it's kind of unorthodox and weird. It's kind of like Crash Bomber for Mega Man 2, except you can shoot multiple at a time and they kind of link into each other. Like if they have like a tether next to each other, if they get in the right space, if they're really close to one another. And that's a one way to generate huge explosions and whatnot, right? And you can also trigger it to explode by pushing down if you really want. But the real reason you want to get Chain Blast is because Power Gear makes it a huge explosive device instantaneously. And this is one of the best weapons in the game. It wrecks practically every mini boss that you come across. It is so much more useful uh, than people give it credit. Chain Blast is really, really freaking awesome. And uh, it makes Mega Man look like Baby Axel. <laughs> You know Axel from X7, X8, the Reploid? It makes him look like little baby Axel. I never really commented on like how the ability makes Mega Man's appearance change, but that's actually a pretty neat touch. I like that it changes his helmet, I like that it changes his arm cannon. It's not just a color change, they actually do something to Mega Man's model, and that's friggin' fantastic. Well folks, all the Robot Masters are done with. You know what that means. Come back for part 5 as we take on Dr. Wily.